Friday, December 14th, 5 p.m. Mountain Time, 2018. Guys, in this video, we're going to take a look at a couple of really interesting pictures that have been sent in in the last couple of days. But first, we're here at Medium.com. And how I arrived here at this article is I've been researching rocks of all things this week. And I'll tell you more about that here in a minute. But this article, dated June of 2014, goes on to say geophysicists discover how rocks produce magnetic pulses and how they might use these pulses to predict earthquakes. One of the most intriguing and puzzling of the many phenomena associated with earthquakes are magnetic pulses. For some years, geophysicists have been measuring these pulses in the days and in some cases weeks before certain earthquakes. For example, during the weeks before the Alum Rock earthquake near San Jose, California, geophysicists recorded a series of unusual low-frequency magnetic pulses with amplitudes of up to 30 nanotesla. By comparison, the Earth's magnetic field has an intensity of about 40,000 nanotesla. These pulses increased in number until the day of the earthquake on October 30th, 2007. That raises an interesting question. What causes these magnetic pulses? Earth is a collection of rocks that's, what, 4,000 miles wide? And there's hundreds of different types of rocks all over the Earth. And they all, well not all, but a majority of them, have a unique frequency and in some cases a unique pulse of magnetism comes from certain areas that's strong enough to be detected prior to earthquakes. What I'm measuring up here is something different and I'll tell you about that here in just a minute. But I've been studying rocks, believe it or not, all week long and I've got an interesting video that I'm working on I want to share with you guys but that'll be at a later day. Um, today we got an answer thanks to the work of John Scoville at San Jose State University. That's out in California. And a couple of his pals. These guys suggest that certain kinds of rocks behave like semiconductors. He went on to say that certain kinds of rocks behave like semiconductors when placed under huge pressures and temperatures. It is the way these rocks conduct current and then causes them to emit magnetic pulses in the run-up to a quake. Scoville and his uh, pals began by explaining the chemistry that leads to igneous rocks behaving like semiconductors. The rock you see up here is very carbon rich. That's why it's doing what it's doing. And we'll talk more about that here in just a minute. They point out that when magma crystallizes in the presence of water, the resulting Silicates contain peroxy bonds consisting of OH groups. Under huge pressures and temperatures, these bonds can break to form electron hole pairs. The electrons become trapped near broken uh, peroxy bonds, but the holes are free to travel through the crystal structure. The natural diffusion of these holes leads to a separation of charge, creating regions of the rock that are positively and negatively charged. The boundary between these regions behaves like a p-n junction of a diode, says Scoville. This allows the current to flow in one direction, but not the other. At least not until the potential difference reaches a certain value when the boundary breaks, allowing a sudden increase in current. It is this sudden increase that generates the magnetic field pulse. The sheer scale of this process over a volume of hundreds of cubic, uh, cubic meters ensures that these magnetic pulses have an extremely low frequency. And since low frequency fields can travel through the Earth's crust, they can be detected on the surface. Having described this effect, Scoville went on to create a model of the processes involved and then calculate the shape of the pulses that ought to be produced. In turn, it turns out that the predicted pulse shape bears a remarkable similarity to the ones that geophysicists observed. And there's their models right there. But it goes on to say that they learned from monitoring these unusual pulses. Now sometimes rocks put off a natural frequency. It wasn't anything like that. These were unusual to the area that weren't normally detected. And they occurred sometimes days, weeks prior to, you know, even smaller earthquakes. But it would be awesome if this was something that was standard in any time you saw this in an area that wasn't prone to these pulses prior to 
any type of an earthquake event, it could be at least some sort of a heads up. At least it's something that you can tangibly measure, you know, like I'm doing up here prior to an earthquake. No guarantee there's going to be one, but it'd be a nice little heads up saying, hey, we're seeing magnetic anomalies in, you know, area A heads up over the next week to five weeks for an earthquake until at least the anomaly stops. And then if the anomaly stops, all's good. But I'm measuring a carbon rich rock for ohms. That's what I'm detecting here is ohms. It's a form of resistance, electrical resistance. You wouldn't think a rock would be able to produce a measurable energy like this, would you? You'd be surprised at the rocks that are around you on a day-to-day -day basis that are putting off energy. It's pretty amazing. And I've measured a bunch this week. That's what I've been doing a lot this week. This is just one of the many. And that's how I ran across this article. And interesting read. I'd heard about the magnetic pulses, you know, a few years back associated with um, earthquakes. But this article I ran across today while I was researching something else associated with my experiment that I've been doing with, with rocks, believe it or not. And that's a carbon-rich rock that puts off a fairly steady signal, an ohm, that's, you can see I'm moving the uh, testers or the contacts around to different places. I even go behind the rock. I'll show you guys in more detail later. Um, but everywhere you go, it's sometimes almost steady. Uh, one time I had a measurement of uh, like 27 something that was almost a constant. But that one is uh, quite exceptional. And again, it is a carbon rich rock. We'll talk about that uh, later on this weekend, possibly next week. But geophysicists discover how rocks produce magnetic pulses and how they might use these pulses to predict earthquakes because they've done it before in an area right before earthquakes they were measuring these pulses so rocks are communicating the earth is loaded with these types of rocks and they all carry the ones that are putting off these signals they all carry a unique signal and i think collectively that probably makes one signal but in a localized area that could tell us that there's an earthquake right around the corner so step in the right direction and that's good to hear hopefully that will uh, produce great things. Here's a picture that was sent in by Scott from California and I got this a few days ago. Interesting picture. In fact, it's a, a, a hallmark picture if you ask me. Great job, Scott. But there's this big sunbeam coming up and there's no real explanation for it, really. I guess a lot of times when we see these, not necessarily one like this, we'll see several scattered out and those can be identified as crep secular rays or anti-crep secular rays but this is a ray of sunlight it's not a dark shadow that's coming straight up through the clouds and I don't see any type of uh, mountain or cloud or anything in the way that could be redirecting that light so it is a very interesting photo here's a better look at it in fact from El Dorado, Cal El Dorado County California and that was sent in by Scott. Thank you, Scott. Good observation. And that's a direct beam of light going straight vertical at sunset. And it's solo. It's not with some other ones going in different directions. It's just one. It's like something's in front of the sun directing a beam of light straight up into the sky. Interesting picture. Much like this one here. Looks like a giant bumblebee looking into the atmosphere. This photo was sent in by Annie from Sweden. The photo was taken by Jarvso. I received this picture today, uh, actually two days ago. Um, giant bumblebee staring into the atmosphere high above Sweden. Check it out. That is an incredible picture. It's like two big eyes right there. There's the nose or the, the section between the eyes. Look at that unbelievable how about that one giant bumblebee looking inside the atmosphere I'm just using that metaphor metaphorically speaking guys but some sort of huge halos that do seem to form what look like a pair of eyes in the sky above Sweden pretty cool all right guys that's all I got for now thanks for sharing I am working on a study on different types of rocks it's going to be I think a very interesting video, an educational video, and this is one of the many that I've been working on this past week 
and I think you guys will enjoy this upcoming uh, video. I'll do it sometime next week. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a super day, and be safe out there.